Hey everybody, PC Gamer Dad here uh, with a new video. Sorry if I sound like I'm a frog um, with marbles in his mouth underwater because uh, my allergies today have been kicking my ass. Anyways, this is Collider 2, a new game that just came out today, April 19th, 2016. Um, I'll get into the nitty gritty of what it is, what it's about, um, and what you, you should expect, um, so stick around. Yeah, so here we are. Uh, so like I said, this is Collider 2. Uh, it's a brand new game that just came out. Um, it's a fairly simplistic game, and it's, it has the feel of a mobile game, something that you'd play on your phone, um, and I'll tell you all the reasons why. Um, so, first off, here's the menu screen. So you have your regular settings, uh, controller settings, video settings, camera settings. Now, this game is also VR compatible, so if you have an Oculus Rift or a Vive or anything like that, and you want to um, put it into VR you can try that out um, based on my gameplay of it so far it seems like it might be kinda cool in VR um, I don't have any of those so I can't speak to that directly but um, the next thing is your hangar where you have your different ships I only have two ships uh, this one's called a Scorpio and this one's called a Sagittarius doesn't really make a difference but um, and you can do cosmetic upgrades with the in-game currency of credits um, which is I mean, it is what it is um, and on the right here, you show uh, your ship's abilities. So this um, is shield regeneration. Um, if you hit something in the environment, your shield goes down. And then if you hit something again a second time, then you toast. Um, so shield regeneration speed is important because you want your shields to come back up as soon as possible. So if you get hit again, then you're fine. Um, the boost duration... Um, is uh, just basically you're running towards the end of the mission so you have a boost um, which is super helpful especially for the ones that are timed um, and I expect you to get to the end as quickly as possible um, so we'll go back um, and the upgrades are one of the first things that clued me in that this is very very similar to a mobile game because during the gameplay itself there's power-ups that you get that are in the environment and the only thing that the upgrades do is extend the duration of your power-ups so cooling so preventing you from overheating from your boosting magnets which is attracting credits to your ship um, a score multiplier um, for multiplayer which is a survival mode um, and then uh, extended duration on your shield uh, so we'll go back and we'll jump in. There's two different game types here. There's um, two different mission types, really. There's a mission mode and a survival mode. Um, we'll do the survival mode second, but uh, this is the second thing that kind of clued me in to make it feel a little like a mobile game, is it has a mission map that's very similar to something of the style of a mobile game, um, where you have... Um, different sectors here up at the top and each one has like 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 and so on for each sector and there's about four different mission types for each sector uh, the one with the stopwatch is uh, for timed you're supposed to get to the end as quickly as possible the one that have the one that has the exploding box here is where you're shooting uh, cubes of lava and making them explode um, it goes based off of how many of them you destroy and not necessarily the time. Um, this one here with the orb is where you're uh, gathering alien artifacts. The same kind of idea as the blocks, but you're gathering instead of destroying. And then each sector has a boss, which looks like this little uh, Space Invaders deal over here. So, um, and that's um, based on time to, do, to destroy the boss. So, um, that's not what I wanted to do. God damn it! Um, let's jump back into here. I didn't want to go into the boss one. Um, I'll show you just a, a simple timed run here. So it does the exact same intro every time it goes into a level. You enter this alien ship, and then you dodge these um, obstacles that are in this tube here. Um, like I said, there's boosting. Um, I'm playing with a mouse. Um, you can play with a controller, um, but I started with a controller and I moved to mouse because mouse is much easier. You just move the mouse in the direction you want the the ship to go, and you press the left mouse button to boost. So fairly simplistic. Um, 
this is one of the other things that made me think that it's very similar to a mobile game is that you have this um, after mission screen where it shows you one, two, or three badges that you've earned based on the criteria of the level. Um, and it lets you restart, go back to the mission, or go back to the main menu. Uh, so, um, and then your credits are earned based on your experience level um, and all that kind of stuff, which is very similar to mobile games. Um, God, I didn't mean to do that either. Let's jump back into a a box destroying one here. Um, so back into the same ship. It's very procedurally generated. Um, this one where you have to destroy, and also the one where you have to um, gather the alien artifacts, you don't have to boost at all in order to pass the level. Um, you just have to shoot these little lava blocks like this, which you don't even actually have to do anything, you just have to hold the cursor over the block and the ship shoots automatically. Um, so it's fairly simplistic. I mean, in the in the higher level sectors, it would be um, more difficult um, holding the cursor on those little cubes, I'm sure. Um, but as for the the beginning stages here, it's fairly simplistic. So, and like I said, these are based on your score is based on how many of these little things you can destroy. Um, so if you destroy all 11, then you get all three badges. If you destroy less than that, then you get two badges and whatnot. So this is one of the beginning levels, so it's fairly easy. But once you get into the other sectors and the environment starts changing and the ships and stuff start speeding up and you start adding boosting, all that kind of stuff, it does get a little hairy, does get a little tricky, um, does require fast reflexes, all that kind of stuff. Um, so let's jump into a survival mode and I'll show you what survival um, is like. It's um, exactly like it sounds, you just kind of go until you crash. So um, this is my highest score right here. I'm currently ranked 58th at 250,000 points. Um, after playing survival mode, the fact that somebody has 10.8 million points in one run is seems ridiculous. But I'm sure they have the fastest ship and the most credits and the all upgrades maxed out so um, it is what it is so the first section of survival goes through something that's very similar to sector one so you get these um, static pieces that you have to fly through these static obstacles um, and then it actually ramps up fairly quickly how difficult it gets because um, once you go through the first gate um, then it starts throwing in sector two obstacles and um, I'll show you what those look like in just a second they are much much trickier so here's the first gate and so then sector 2 obstacles rotate with the environment so not only do you have to go through but you also have to predict where the opening is going to be while the thing is turning so it's a little trickier and then you have ones that have closing gates in between each one as well as spinning obstacles so it gets a little trickier from here I'm actually doing surprisingly well but what? there goes my shield and that's what it looks like when you crash and die um, so yeah survival mode you just kinda go until you can go I'm assuming um, like I said if you have a better ship or you have more upgrades you have more credits all that kinda stuff you can go further um, which is like a mobile game uh, so the more the more you play and the more upgrades you get the further you can go but it is kind of just this repetitive um, flight down this tube and kind of the environment and the obstacles change a little bit so um, there you have it Collider 2 um, it's 10 bucks on Steam right now it's not on sale it just came out um, so I I don't know if it's worth 10 bucks to just play it with a mouse like I'm doing right now. Like I said, I don't have VR, so if you play it in VR, the flying around of the ship and dodging stuff might be really fucking cool. Um, like I said, I can't speak to that because I don't have a VR headset, so that might make it worth the 10 bucks. Um, but if you plan on just playing this with a mouse and putting like an hour into it and leveling up to maybe level 20 or something like that, then um, I don't know if it's worth the 10 
dollars. You might want to wait for it to come up on sale. So, um, and one other thing I wanted to note is that um, I have been playing this for a little over an hour now, and none of my Steam achievements have registered. So that's a little disconcerting. I don't know if that's going to be fixed because um, it seems like a pretty prominent bug. Um, because one of the achievements, like the very first achievement, is just as simple as get 500 credits, which I have a ton of credits. Um, so it should have registered. It should have registered a bunch of them already. But they're not popping up, which is bad. Really bad. Um, so, yeah, if you're also an achievement hound and you want to get the achievements, you probably want to stay away from this one, at least until they fix that. So, um, if you like the video, hit the like button. Um, make sure to leave comments down below if you have comments about the game. Um, if you're one of those people with millions and millions of points, tell me how you did it. Um, make sure to hit the subscribe button. All kinds of videos come in soon, very, very soon. So, um, make sure to go over to Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, at PCGamerDad1. That's at PCGamerDad1, the number one. Um, and you can send me tweets over there, send me comments, retweet my stuff, whatever, however that shit works. Um, and yeah, as for now, this is PC Gamer Dad signing off. Peace.